show. Mom and pop, and I, I'll eat them all, boy. I had uh, three different trees in my house. Uh, three different types of mangoes, including the Filipino mangoes, which are the, like the really long ones. Yeah. And, uh, and then I had a big ass avocado tree and we had like 16 banana trees. I had like a three quarter acre yard. And so we had a whole bunch of trees. So when I was a kid, that's how I would, you know, come up with some extra money. Oh, I yeah. would. I would I would pack in uh, the the avocados and go to the local grocery stores and and sell it to them and uh, and then you know go buy my uh, my baseball cards Coke uh, Pan de Gloria whatever whatever snack that I was interested in also back in the day yeah you had to be crafty back in the day bro yeah you man. Know? So, so I sold my fruit and uh, obviously when you're you're biking around. Uh, we would find bottles and uh, and return them for five cents each bottle, and uh, that was another way to generate some income so we can go play I some video games. Not video could... games, but pinball. That's what it was then. Yeah, I remember those days where you could return bottles and get some some money. Yeah, man, hell yeah, that was that was awesome to us. It was heaven to find a bottle that wasn't broken and shattered. All right, we can make some money off of this one, you know, that kind of stuff. So back, back then, 50 cents was a lot of money. Oh, dude. I would take advise you a pack of chips today. Yeah, man. You 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 returned enough bottles. You were you were living like a king. You had a Coke and an ice cream in hand, and you said all the work was well worth it, baby. Well worth it. All right. So speaking of work and being well worth it, seems like you wrote about a uh let's say a motivated Tyreek Hill. Talk to me a little um, bit about that. I, I don't know if it's fair to say motivated because we don't know him. Um, we're just getting used to knowing him. So, I mean, but it's basically a young man who's like, I, I work. I, you know, I work and I'm, I'm here to lead and I'm showing these guys that I work and I put in the work so that it's no surprise how you become this good. And it's true. He's, he's a worker. Uh, uh, one thing that, that, I don't know if I could say surprises me, but he's fast. Uh, and and there, there's, you know, I've seen fast guys. You know, I've, I've seen, I've seen fast Waddle's guys. fast. Waddle's fast, bro. Waddle's fast. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's funny to say Waddle's fast. Like, yeah, Tyreek's fast. Like, there's, there's, there is a different level of like you. You'll be amazed at how easy it is for him to get open. Um, the despite double coverage or it's just a snap of the fingers, he's open. He's 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 got. You know, I, I say this a bit and understand. I covered the University of Miami during its glory days, so I know fast. I went to high school at Santana Moss. I know fast. I know what fast is. Like, but Tyreek Hill is fast. Right. It's I I don't know if I've ever seen that kind of speed. So that's that's why it's going to be fun to see how they draw up all these mismatches out on the field, because you have all this speed that's going to create space. And, you know, yeah. I'm, happy for, I'm happy for Tua because he threw in some of the tightest windows in the NFL last year. So you have a terrible offensive line and then you have no running game and your wide receivers can't get any separation. I mean, you're, you're, I, I mean, for Tua excitement for him was maybe being able to throw it up to Gesicki or Parker. That might be the most separation his receivers would ever get when they would go up in the air. Yeah. So uh, uh, getting guys to get separation is going to make his life, man, a shit ton easier, bro. Absolutely. Um, I've, I've only seen two or throw once. I, I was having this conversation with somebody like, it's not fair for me to sit here and tell you what Tua looks like because I've seen him one day. You know, right. yesterday he missed yesterday's practice because he was a little under the weather. And that's great. But, you know, people are, are saying nice things about him. People are, are giving him good reviews based on what they've seen now. This is it's it's important to point out that this was what you see without Xavier and Byron Jones on the field. Um, completely secondary. I mean, if you if you're gonna talk about the Miami Dolphins, 
they're a team that's built around an entire team that's built around their cornerback unit and their secondary. And if you don't have the secondary there, uh, oh, well, yeah, but I, I saw fast guys like Antonio Brown and what they did to X. Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, they, they okay. Do. So, so I'm not, I'm not worried about you. Just you, you started the segment with he's fast. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Guess what, Omar? I, I, X ain't that fast. Byron Jones ain't that fast. So he'll get separation yeah, on them too. I, I, I mean, but no, nah. they're not that fast. They're not that fast. They're fast. They're fast. They're not that fast. They're not that okay? fast. Don't backtrack now. Don't court. No, 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 no. Now. They're fast. But I'm just saying, it's not fair to sit and analyze without saying, okay, your best, you know, defense won yesterday. And they didn't even have their three best players on the field. No Emmanuel Agba, no um, uh, Xavier Howard, no Byron Jones. You know, outside of Javon none, Holland, none of, that, none of that would matter anyways because there's no blocking and tackling anyways. So it doesn't really. Uh, over the years, honestly, you know what's funny. And, and, by, and by the way, if there's no blocking or tackling, that's when Tyreek Hill has a bigger advantage, and so does Waddle, and so does the so entire does the quarterback. So does the quarterback. Yeah, um, the enti- I just said the entire offense. Yeah, t- uh, trust me. But, but by the way, by downplaying it all. You can't just say, well, maybe Tyreek really likes this guy. Maybe Tyreek thinks that this guy's actually really good, that he's just not talking it up. Tua, yeah. Yeah, I I, I don't really pay attention to what Tyreek Hill says about Tua because it's, you know, it was was nice. It was cute. Because, of course, it can't be true, right? No, 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 no. no, 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 I'm not saying that. No shot it can be true. Why pay attention to it? No, I, I don't. I don't. No, I don't pay attention to what. What what uh you know people who are are tied and and need his absolute loyalty and love, they're they're gonna give you the great praise. If a honestly, if a defensive player is saying it about Tua, that that's more to, that's more to, um pay attention to for me because I know the history of defense and and these quarterbacks for this franchise. So defensive players are always gonna keep it real and honest about the quarterback. And even Eric Rowe said, yeah. He's he's better. He's 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 improved. You could you could see that there's noticeable difference um in the arm. That that I put a ton of stock into. What a what a right receiver says about his quarterback, no. I, I can't I can't put much weight into that. Uh I would in accuracy I would. And that's oh, I mean, I but we know he's clearly, clearly clearly Tyreek was a little shocked with the accuracy. He also said he also said he's got a cannon, which you know, come on, let's let's be real. Let's. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe he has a decent arm that no. we're watching. He does have a decent him. arm. He's, he says he has a cannon. He does not have a cannon. Let's let's yeah, let's, let's 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 be real about. Like, things, but I mean, he's, you know. he's saying he's saying favorable things to the guy who's going to put food on his table. Yeah, well, he's supposed to. Yeah, you should correct. be saying fair. You you should be saying favorable things, but. Maybe those favorable things are actually real and they're actually true. true. As I tell you, based on my experience, I can't put much stock into what an offensive player says about their quarterback, what a wide receiver says about their quarterback. Yeah, for me, I I, see because I I just I know that if the environment's different, you're going to see a completely different quarterback. So that's where I don't think anybody can really succeed under the, the situation he was in the last couple of years you just can't deal with that kind of stuff and have he succeeded success. he succeeded too so no but I, no i mean but not not the kind of success that he could have it's because you're not being helped he was able to overcome the crap that he had but really you still need help bro i don't care who you are i don't care what quarterback you are bro you gotta have help and i think this is the year where he now has help finally that's and fair have to kind of swim upstream all by himself is is my only is that how we're describing his first two years he had to swim upstream by himself yeah well when your coach hates you can't build an offensive staff you have no running game and they can't block okay yeah yeah yeah, that's uh dude the kid was under hell the last couple years just hell I, I, mean, I don't know. You, you, you that's go to how work. I would describe how it. do you go? How, how do you go to work when somebody doesn't like you, bro? How do you go to work when somebody doesn't believe in you? It's like, how do you go to work when they're probably not doing what's best for you? 
That's that's what he. Those are the situations. You went, was to, QM, so you went to QM for twenty two decades under yeah. those conditions. No, 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 no. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let's come. Let's let's separate everything. Okay. It was once CBS took over, and Joe Bell left or okay. was released. That's when everything changed. Okay. okay. Once Beasley sold out, and then it became CBS and Intercom. That's when it went all to shit. And when the clown that's there now, Len Weiner, got there, that's when it all, like, I, I my initial meeting with him, you know, it was like, so I, I, I go to him, so, um, hey, I, I need an extra producer. You know, every other show has two producers. Some shows have two or three hosts at that time. I'm the solo host. And I had a rookie, I had Solana at that time. And Solana was a baby. He had no Rolodex, no nothing. He knew nothing. He was uh, a youngin. So I needed somebody that was experienced to help book guests. He goes to me, oh, it's not in the budget. And I go, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I've got about 15 sponsors. What do you mean it's not in the budget? And he goes, oh, that's not how it works. And then I, And then here's where I got fired. I go, so wait a minute. You have a show on 790 that has three hosts in the morning, two producers, no live spots, and they can have what I don't have. And that's where he lost it because that was his baby, 790. So he, you know, he had a morning show with Beast and Tobin, and all and those guys had no live spots. As, 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 as Brandon Marshall, as Brandon they Marshall were, says. Uh, yeah, we they, get were, messy. they weren't producing any effing money whatsoever, okay? I produced more money in one hour than that show did in three months, okay? And you're going to tell me it's not in... Right there, I knew I was fired. Right there, I go, oh, so you're not going to help me get something so I can better my show. Oh, no problem. As Brandon Marshall says... I, right right away, I walked over right to now. Solana. I walked over to Solana. I said, I'm getting fired. And he goes, what? And I go, you'll see. It'll it'll come. Don't worry about it. And I knew for 11 months, bro, 11 months, I had to walk into that that place because I had to wait for my option to be up. You know what I mean? And it's like all these shows, you know, have two and three hosts. Hey, listen, and I, and, and I, I fly I, solo every day. The scenes, I know you're telling the truth. And... and I got no reason to lie about this, bro. That, that, like, hey, I listen. From, you know? Yeah. But that's why that's why I was the only person in the world that was super happy when I got fired finally because I got the hell out of there, bro. <sighs> that is, uh, But it's, it's I can relate to two in that sense. That when, you, when you're working for someone that does not want to support you. And that is just the worst in the world dude it's just tough to 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 fight that on a concern and i can't imagine i'm just talking about a radio show yeah <laughs> this man's got hey, 300 pound linemen that want to rip his head off bro and, and, and the funny thing is and and i don't think people get this like people paint to a like he's been a colossal failure like if you had to look at Tua's okay. career in his first two years He's been a success. I know. And I'm, hey, listen, I'm the crazy nut that said he had a phenomenal rookie year. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, I mediocre. Oh, not gonna. No, he was phenomenal considering what hit what happened to him, how he was coming out of a hip injury, didn't have an offseason. There's COVID, all this and that. And 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 he had a guy that wasn't in his corner. Uh, dude, he was phenomenal. He's been good, man. Now is when I expect him to take that step forward because yes. if you have I, support, I, we should all – if you can – if you have the skill set and you have the support, then you should have success, period. End of story. Yes. So repeat that again. If you have the skill set and you have the success, you should get it done. You should be successful. Okay. Now, if you if you don't have the skill set, I don't care what support you have, you're not going to get it done. But I believe he has the skill set. He just hasn't had the support. Now he has the support. With that combination, we can all succeed. 
I didn't have any any support at QAM, and it is what it is. Now we have our support. We have everybody, and we're doing 26 million down, download this year, something that no one is going to be doing on local radio anywhere. So you got to have support, bro. You got to have support. If you don't or have build support, it yourself. Well, yeah, but but you build it to the point that you get the support. That's, That's what we've done. That's what yeah. we've done. You know what I mean? That's what all of us have done in this platform. And we've built it up so we can get the support that we need. And that's kind of the idea. And and you have to feel it too, bro. Everybody has to feel it when you walk into that building. You have to see it in the pictures, in the videos. You see it in Tua's body language. All of those things. Yeah, Tyreek said something about confidence yesterday that I've never really thought about. And you know, and, and and he is trying to build Tua up. He's trying to build him up from a confidence standpoint to think that you're the best quarterback in the world. There's no reason why you can't be Patrick Mahomes. Exactly. And technically, outside of the arm, there is no reason he can't be Patrick Mahomes. He has enough arm to play the game at an incredibly Absolutely. high level. I'm not worried about that. At I'm an elite worried. level, did you say? At, what at, at, at an incredibly high level. High level. I have no problem. That, we, dude, we, we have this, this misconception yes. that all bombs are Absolutely. 70 yards in no the question. air. No question. It's um, the stupidest thing in the freaking world, and, bro. And the ball usually is in the air. 15, and that a quarterback needs a yards. cannon. Yeah. Drew Brees never had a cannon. Tom Brady never had a cannon. Uh, Peyton Manning never had a cannon. You don't need a cannon. What you need is accuracy and anticipation. Exactly. And, and, that, those are the and normally the ball, uh, Omar, the ball's in the air only 15, 25, 35 yards. It's the, it's the, it's Tyreek with the speed. It, it, it makes it a 70 yard it's touchdown. throwing the ball. ball to a receiver in stride, allowing him to catch it without slowing his speed. Or that gives you the extra yards. I completely agree with you. And that's what, like, the, uh, I, I say this last year as somebody who is, you know, I know I'm not on to anon. I don't want to be on to anon. Um, you're, not allowed, you're not allowed. I know I'm not allowed. I'm, I'm good. Um, um, I know you're, 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 you lost your train of thought. No, 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 no. When we're in Arizona and lifting up the trophy, no. celebrating with two, it, uh, it's the you arc it. throws. It's the arc throws. And people don't understand what I mean by arc. I mean, it goes like this. It's drop it right in a bucket. Yeah. And it's where only his corner, only his wide receiver can catch that ball. Those passes you might see three times in practice. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. Oh yes, Tom. and then and then last year when you see the pocket presence with that shit show of a line, just just like think about Tanner. Put just in your mind as a Dolphins fan, remove Tua and put Tannehill back there. Well, Tannehill was about, the, Tannehill was the most sack quarterback or second most sack quarterback in the NFL with a running game. Yes, and think <laughs> about and and think about all the struggles that Tannehill would have had. Whereas Tua is evading pressure, Tua is eluding pressure, Tua is stepping up in pressure. He's got what he needs. He does. Absolutely, he's got what he needs. And, you know, I say this knowing that it's it, there's no guarantee he's going to be elite. But does he have every single thing that he takes to be a Chad Pennington, to be a Kurt Warner? Um, absolutely. No question. You know, will he be elite? I don't know. Will, he can, will, uh, we, you, I think what we have to separate that comment that you're saying is he can be an elite passer. He just he doesn't have to have the freakish talent. Okay, that that's the difference. You can be, you know, Drew Brees was elite. He, yeah. he didn't have elite talent, Correct. but he was elite. And yeah. so you can be elite without having because I've watched. Roger Staubach, I've watched Fran Tarkenton, I've watched, you know, guys that weren't necessarily these, these physical specimens, but they played the game at an incredibly high level at times, and they could do that because they were great quarterbacks. 
And it's something that I talk about all the time because it's accuracy, it's ball placement, it's anticipatory skills, all of those kind of things. That's what those guys have, bro. Uh, uh, Philip yeah. Rivers played at a high level, and he didn't have a gun or anything, oh, bro. Philip had a gun. Philip had a gun. Yeah, not a gun, no, bro, not a gun. He had like this shot put that was a decent throw, but it wasn't. Uh, a, it wasn't a Marino, a Warren Moon. It wasn't a Mahomes. It yeah, wasn't. Philip had a better arm than even the uh, 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 head, head. we have in the in the uh, the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen, he's got a freaking cannon, bro. No, oh, no, he got a cannon. He got a cannon. Philip had a shotgun now. He Philip had a shotgun. Yeah, but it, but it wasn't it, it wasn't a gun. I've I, I watched I, I that thing a lot of. I mean, hold on, hold on. You don't need the cannon. Like, That's what I'm saying. That's my point. We, but we have too many. It's the whole thing about the deep ball. Oh, he can, dude. He can throw the deep ball. The deep ball is only 25, 35, 40 yards downfield. He can do that easily, and the receiver does the rest. But everybody thinks the deep ball. Is normally 75, 80 yards downfield. It's and not. That's just not that, that, that's, it's, that's, it's that happens once or twice a year to a couple quarterbacks and a Flacco and a Mahomes or whatever. Broken, and and it's it. broken plays. Yeah. And of course, exactly. Great call on your part. So that's why it's, it's just kind of a misconception thing. There's a lot of quarterbacks over the years, whether they were tall or medium or whatever. He, they didn't he had, have he had, great, he had plenty of deep balls last year. Yeah. Hey, Marino didn't have any athleticism whatsoever, dude. He can only shift and move a couple of inches. Ooh, but that's, all, that's all he needed in order to burn your ass. And he had the great arm. Some guys, either they're not gifted with one thing or another. That doesn't mean they can't become. You remember when Marino was playing like Frankenstein? Yeah, of course. I covered it. Yes. Yeah, like, and he would still whoop your ass. Exactly, exactly, and the guy couldn't move. He wasn't John Elway. He was never John Elway, yet he was elite in his own way. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and so that's what I'm saying that you don't have to have the gifted arm that you can throw it out of the stadium and then be considered elite. There's lots of quarterbacks over the years that have played at a really high level. And they don't have the gun that you can throw out of it. So to me, Tua can be an elite passer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Not an elite talent, like a freakish talent. Okay, fine. But I've seen a ton of freakish talents. You know, Jeff George that I wouldn't trust, or um, a Russell, Jay Cutler. Uh, Jay Cutler. What's uh, the Jamarcus Russell kid? Ooh, yeah. um, you know, there, there's I've seen guys that Keely Smith was super gifted. Vince Young was super gifted. But in the end, bro, it's a matter of this right Anticipation, here. Anticipation, accuracy. I, I, I remember I used to keep I used to keep this piece of paper on my desk that uh, a, a elite quarterback developer. Once gave me once told me. Um, I don't share who it, who it was, um, but and atop the list, accuracy, anticipation. I, I gotta find it again. I, I think I've written a column about it, uh, but I, I don't know where that piece of paper is. But it was the ten traits of the elite quarterback needed. I kept that list from Henny, and I could tell you, I gotta find that list and find what that. I, I know I've written a column about it. Tua's got at least. Six six or seven of those traits and the others the others are to be de to be determined so okay. we'll, we'll see so we'll see he's, he's got to step up and be a, a, a leader that inspires people and that that to me is 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 what 2022 is all about what else are you working on in the sunset and also uh the peoples can check you out um, I'm, I'm going to mention two names to you and, and I want to get your response. Okay. Okay. Lynn Bowden Jr. Okay. You, you want the response? Yeah. What, give me the response. Multi-talented kid who is totally unproven and very intrigued to see if he can add something to the offense. Just an Hunts unknown. An okay. unknown. Right now. Hunter Long. Well, wow, I have no idea who the hell Hunter Long is. Obviously, they liked him. I'm not sure if it was a Flores thing because of the whole Boston College thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if it was a Flores thing because Gesicki didn't block and Flores wanted a guy that could block. Oh, oh, oh. It, listen, 
if 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 Brian Flores hated Tua, trust me, he hated Mike Gesicki. Well, I know, I know they didn't get along, but that I can tell you. I know for a yeah. fact that those two did not get along. I know that. I know that. And, you know, and I will say, I will say this to you. I can tell you it's a fact. Okay. I, that, I will say this to you, and I dropped this in 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 my observations of practice report from yesterday. Mike Gesicki's running routes differently, and. The one of my biggest concerns outside of the blocking, let's put that to the side. Like, I, I don't believe that it'll ever happen. Okay, right. let's let's put that to the side. Okay. You know where we stand on this. That, 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 and that's fair, bro. That's yes, fair. that's a but, fair criticism of his. But one of my yes. other criticisms of Mike Kosicki throughout the years was he is slow to build up speed, he takes forever to get into his top of his route. And I've noticed that that was different. That's that's, that's most tight ends, bro. Not all of them are Darren Waller yeah, and, geez. you know, uh, uh, Vernon, no, David, Vernon Davis. And, you know, there's a couple of those freaks, bro. But most yeah, of them, yeah, yeah. remember, those, they're, remember, they're, they're, remember doggy, they're long striders. So it takes them tight ends that usually. Not all of them are long bit. striders. But I, I hear what your point is. But him more than most. And, and by the way, can I just throw one more caveat in there? How many fast risers are white? Never thought about it. The volleyball ones. Okay. Not a lot of those. There are a lot of fast oh, no, white no, tight ends that are breaking the out the line. And they're they're, the they're, the they're disappearing the like Darren Waller. You know what I'm saying? I I hate to use the whole race thing, but I got to throw it out there. You know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of those guys in the history of the damn game, by the way, because my mind is racing, and I'm trying to think of a, a, lot of elite a white, fast guy, white guy and and – I don't know. Maybe George Kittle. Maybe a, a lot little of elite bit. white tight ends out there now. Huh? A lot of elite white tight ends out there now. Right, but they're not like what you're talking about. They're not Darren Waller off the line. They're not Vernon yeah, Davis. I don't, I, I, but but the point I, is, you know, by the way, folks, I'm talking about the young Vernon Davis who came out of college and was a four three guy. Oh, oh don't small. Uh, yeah, people put better put some respect on Vernon Davis. You know he's yeah, an Vernon actor Davis. now, right? Vernon, Vernon Davis is a monster, bro. You know he's an actor, like like yeah, actor, yeah. movie actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I'm I'm a big Vernon Davis fan, bro. That guy TV was series he was actor, but he was a but, stud, bro. Stud. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, that guy's a freak. You know what I'm saying? There aren't a lot uh, of those guys, Omar. He, they he, take a, they take a little bit to get going. That's all I'm saying. My my point is, Gesicki's like yesterday. He ran a seam. He ran a seam route. <laughs> Got there. And for Skylar Thompson, and I was like, "Who is this, Mike Gesicki? I don't know that guy. I like to look like a totally different receiver. Maybe a different route that wasn't in the tree for him. It probably was. Probably right. was. What was it like? A skinny post is what you're talking about? Is what he ran? Um, I couldn't see what that top of the route was because it, it they were blocking. It, it was we didn't have. They were on. You will understand this. They were on the opposite field, and then we were on the field level, and then defenders were standing in front of us. Oh, so I see what you're saying. So the you, angle. You, as somebody who watches practice, you know what that's like. like yeah, that's you get, yes, right, right. You're, you're, like, peeking between players to see what the hell is going on. Right, right, um, right. So it wasn't an ideal situation for me to see what the top of the route was, but it was straight up the post. It was straight up the scene, and I was just like, and he got there. And I only saw it from – I knew how fast he got there because I was on field level. And I was like, I didn't know Mike Pasicki can run that fast. Like, Good I, athlete, man. He's a good he's athlete. He's a good athlete, but he takes forever to build up speed. Let's be real about it. That's fine. That's fine. And, and no problem, if, if this tight end coach can teach him – and this tight end coach has worked with some good tight ends. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what his name Embry. Yeah. If he could teach him how to get to the top of his route quicker – and how to get off a block? Woo! He might well, be something. Yeah. He might be something. And, and I think that you're going to see Gesicki maybe even pick up some blocks, secondary blocks, not first level blocks. Okay. But I can see him. I can see him helping out because. Just let, hey man, let's, hey, let's go if back. If you can let, teach him how to block, let, this let guy me, needs me. to be in the Hall of Fame. Let's go back to your Tyreek and to a conversation, young man. Right now is the time where you build them up. Hey, Mike, you didn't do this. Hey, Mike, you didn't do that. You know why you didn't do it, man? 
because people didn't believe in you. We believe in you. Okay. We think you can do this. And All so, right. and, I, and I believe that Mike can do this. He can pick up a safety. He can you pick up Mike a, a, a safety or a corner, not a defensive lineman, not a tackle, not a middle linebacker, or maybe not even an edge outside rushing linebacker. Yeah. Can you block Andrew Van Ginkle? The, se the, the secondary Mike level. Mike Gesicki block Andrew Van Ginkle. Yeah. Yeah. That, like eventually, I think he could get in his way. Okay, uh, you can kind of get it, but I don't think. Uh, he, but, but Omar, you're misunderstanding me. I don't think they're going to require him to block the first level. No, they're not. I think they're gonna, I think he's going to be a big receiver like yes, the other receivers, is. and he's going to pick up safeties and other DBs in the way when when the running back gets that second level. That's where I think Gesicki is going to help out in his block. And are you confident I think in who he plays? plays because that's how you build up the confidence. You get them to that level this year, and then you say maybe every once in a while you might, all right, I want you to run right across and knock the hell out of that end for us and try to open it up for us. I can see that later on, but this year, I think he's going to be a factor helping out in the second level. That's all so, I'm saying. So Hunter Long is just a complete mystery to you. Yeah, but dude, he, he is mystery meat. I have no idea what we're getting from him whatsoever. It's what if I told you he's gotten bigger and stronger this offseason? Oh, then they're gonna then then that tells me they want him to block like crazy. Oh, and, you 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 do know, and people don't know this, but he started his first game as a rookie. People don't know that. Well, okay, so let me tell you something. Here's and then he what I want. Here's what we're gonna look at for Hunter Long. Now that you told me that they built him up, then that tells me they're gonna use him H back, and that tells me. They're gonna have him learn some Alec Ingold type of situations. Yeah. So I can actually see him coming off the line and coming to the back and playing a little fullback too. So I can see something like that. If you tell me they bulked him up, it's no, because he's gotten stronger. I, 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 you, you can see his shoulders are broader. He's, he, I, I, you know, I'm holding on. I'm holding. Wait, is it is it broader? Is it bigger, or, or is he just filling in? Uh it's he's it's bigger, and okay, he's more so, he's more muscular defined. So I'm 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 intrigued because they're going to give him a role. They're going to have to give him a role, and something tells me that it might be something of an H back slash fullback type of role. He can pass catch, remember. So if he can block, then if he has the athleticism and the smarts to pick up the extra blitzer then he might be able to fill in. You don't have a backup for Alec Ingold. I'm not telling you you're going to have a perfect backup because yeah, nobody you cares. Gonna, gonna, one, yeah, you do. There's going to be one on the practice squad. Uh, right, right. But, 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 but in a game where Alec Ingold gets banged up, you may have to move Hunter Long in that spot. So that's all I'm saying, that maybe just from a – you know, outsider's perspective from what yeah. you're telling me. Maybe I can run with that. Be a I might be a little bit. We got mini camp next week, so yeah, off season's almost over. They got one no, it, it, after mini camp. Yeah. Um, watch, watch, watch Hunter. See if they move him around because they've got they they have. If he's not going to be your number one tight end like Gesicki is then you have to try to find another role for him. And if you're so, if you're so run oriented, then mm -hmm. he's going to be part, he's going to be part of that blocking scheme. Got to be. Yeah. Because exactly. you, here's my thing. Are you confident with the tight end? Who's going to be doing 600 snaps in line a season? No, no, you can't, you can't, that that's not, you don't want to do that to him. Smythe is the guy. So then Hunter becomes the guy that backs up Smythe and backs up Ingold. That's okay. what I think. That's a good plan. That's what I think. But that's yeah. just, you know, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so that's what you're working on the Sentinel. A couple of stories on those guys? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm getting ready for rookie camp. Uh, I mean, not, oh. I'm getting ready for mini camp. Okay. And then yeah. then my Pittsburgh Post-Gazette job. So. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. I didn't even bring it up this time. All right. There you go. <laughs> Follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly. And, of course, you can catch him twice a week here as uh, we're always talking Dolphins here. Hardcore, baby. And uh, make sure you also subscribe to the Sunset Note and support Omar and all the other great writers we have. I'm on I Am Athlete 
tonight, which is oh, their nice. serious show on channel 82 okay. uh, for the rest of this week from Whoa. 7 to 9, channel 82. Um, Look out, pulling that extra check. All right. <laughs> yeah. Going to be a main check soon. <laughs> I'm but, sure yeah. it is. Huh? I'm sure it is. Good yeah. for you. That's what you need. We need like eight jobs in this world in order to survive. You know, yeah. it's like it's it's like that Jamaican skit. That was well, on in Living Color, right? In Living Jamaican. Color, absolutely. I got six jobs, man. Right, right, exactly. I was gonna say Saturday Night Live, and I go, no, no. Actually, that was in, in Living Color. Six jobs. God, Imagine that's, if that's... In Living Color had like a special. Could you? Would you? Wouldn't you watch? Oh, for sure. They tried. They Did tried. They? To, they, they, yeah, yeah. Wayman's tried to kind of resurrect it but they 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 just could not get it done but yeah dude that show was so good man did they God. try to resurrect it they tried they tried it, Way, uh wayman brothers tried uh there was it was like three four years ago there was some talk about it and but it, it just never materialized unfortunately mm. but yeah yeah and you know what you're never able to recapture that match nah you can't that's the one thing that, that I get. That the, Arsenio Hall show, that, you remember Arsenio Hall show came back. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And see, this is why Saturday Night Live, I give them credit because they've given you different casts throughout the year and you never get burned out. And you really can't keep the same cast for a long, long time because then everybody will get burned out of them. And they always seem to find new people and new people. And it may not be as good as one era or the other, but every era has some good people. You know what I mean? Like right now, they're losing Kate McKinnon. Dude, Kate McKinnon is top 20 of all time. She's one of the greatest SNL um, uh, actors they've ever had. That woman has played 4,000 roles, man. She's awesome. I you know can't what I mean? even tell you who she is, but yes, yeah. I believe you. Yeah, but uh, that's that's the difference. That's where I give them credit that they've been able to change over time. But it's hard to recapture that magic, man. It just is. Just is. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, John C., who uh, just uh, gave us a little love, he says, it's nice to get to know these insiders a little better. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much. And Omar, thank you, my friend. We will catch up uh, on uh, Friday. All right. All right? Talk to you, later. All right. you got it, baby. Be good. There you go. Omar Kelly and our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. Let's go into the final and fourth hour of the program. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.